Hi everyone, hope you are doing well from wherever you are watching this channel, depending on your time zone. Now, when police used excess force on the protesters, tear gas, water can uh, cannons, live bullets shoot at protesters, excessive force. There is no church that came out strongly to condemn this. No pastor, no bishop, no reverend, no priest, no one came out to strongly condemn the government on what they are doing and warn the government. Instead, few came out to call for dialogue. First of all, condemn the problem, the mistake, and misbehavior in the government. No one condemned that. But today, we have the Catholic priest at Holy Basilica who came out with a message from Pope. A very strong message to William Ruto. In fact, this message is for the youth. That there was a revolution in Nairobi and the politics of Kenya. Going forward, it has changed. No backwards. He's encouraging youth. And again, also thanking those who helped the people who were, uh, who were hurted by this regime. Remember, the Holy Basilica Church opened their gates to people who were beaten, wounded, killed, you know, and they offered their service in terms of treatment to give them water where necessary so that they can clear the, that tear gas and drink some water. They offered that kind of service. They literally opened their door for these oppressed Kenyans. But here's a message here. Trail. These days, yes, it was read. We have witnessed a revolution in Nairobi. What, we, what happens after this, politics in this country will have to change. If the government wants to allay the fear and the anger, not only of the youth, but of all the Nwananchi, of all the hustlers of great country, of this great country, they cannot continue and do as business as usual. <laughs> business has to change. <laughs> because our youth means business. <laughs> as with all revolutions, and also this one, unfortunately but nearly inevitably was accompanied by violence. Oppressors against the oppressed, heavily armed security forces against poorly protected protesters. Water cannons, tear gas, life bullets against sticks and stones. Oppression against protests. Sirens and explosions against the shouting and pleading of protesters. Estate machinery shooting free at will, at free will. Blood on the streets, red. Dead bodies left behind. Wounded in the square of Holy Family Basilica. Youth killed in Gidurai. Internet influences and student leaders abducted, tortured, and humiliated, dumped in the dark and filthy ditches of Nairobi. Revolution. Now, my dear friends, young men, as you sit here in front of me, how did you see it? How did you live it these days? And where were you these days? Maybe you felt the need to join. Maybe you wanted to shout with your age mates, with Gen Z. You wanted to shout for justice and freedom for all. Ask yourself, where do you stand in all this? Would you be ready to give your life 
for justice and peace in this country? Where do you stand? Where do you belong? What would you do? Christians, Catholics, are not connect, disconnected from the events of these days. And in fact, the church should not be disconnected from the events of these days. And after an initial hesitation at Holy Family Basilica, when it had closed its gates so that protesters could not enter, on Tuesday, however, it opened its gates so that people could receive water, wash their faces, drink a bit, so that the wounded could be treated at a field hospital that had been set up within the compound. The church as a field hospital where the wounded can be taken care of, where people find water to quench their thirst, where desperate people can be consoled and lost people shown the way. It happened all very concretely these days there on the square of Holy Family Basilica in the center of town in CBD. Thanks, I would say, to the young doctors and nurses who offer their services, and thanks to the lawyers who watched the scenes unfold to build up their cases, thanks to the priests and the religious whose habits and alps were smeared with dirt and blood as they brought in the wounded and consoled those in pain and despair. They were the images of the Good Shepherd taking the lost sheep on his shoulder. And they took on, as Pope Francis would say, the smell of the sheep. And together with doctors and nurses, with lawyers and psychologists, they were like the Good Samaritans, cleaning wounds and bandaging them. Now, as we continue with the final discussion, just a quick request for those who are watching and you have not yet subscribed, please consider subscribing. To our Italian members, I must say thank you so much. And again, to all our viewers, please give this video a thumbs up. Thank you so much and back to this discussion. Now imagine those bishops who are going to the state house. Can they come out strongly to condemn the government the same way this priest is doing here? He, he literally explained what happened in Nairobi that heavily armed police against poorly guarded protesters. The protesters were not armed. The only thing they had was a bottle of water, they had their iPhone and a blank card. But heavily armed police dealt with them as if these youth were criminals. He is condemning that. He is warning the government that the oppressor was happy to oppress the oppressed. And they were using by every means. By the way, issues that youth were raising, they were of great concern and it was time for the government to lend their ear to the youth. Then bring a solution. Instead, what happened? Arrogance. You look at William Rudolph's first statement before he bring the second one. He referred to this youth as criminals. Why? The priest is not referring to them as criminals. When they are the own now, the criminals, priest and a matter of one appear. The priest was seeing the oppressed poor youth on the street, Gen Z. But William Ruto is seeing criminals causing havoc, committing treason. But things have changed. And if you look at that church, Indeed, this uh, father was reaching out to, uh, to many souls. You see, there is a lot of youth in that church, and the message literally resonated very well with the people. A lot of youth, I don't think if there is any politician in that church, would have been given a platform to play politics, especially when you want to defend the government. You don't speak about the people suffering and the other things. Mambo ya kiro. Ile waliambia sudi, ongea mambo ya kiro, wacha mambo ya siyasa. 
So to some extent, the Nairobi, uh, sorry, uh, the the Holy Basilic in Nairobi offer the assistance to people who are injured. And in this statement, you could see it. The message, of course, has been approved by Pope Francis. He may talk wrong. They offered treatment. They offered a place to relax. They offered security to those people who are running for their lives. They offered water to quench thirst to those who are so thirsty. And they accommodated these people. They actually offered hospitality to these people. And that is what the church should do. So this church is serving an, as an example. They offer their help, but again they come out to condemn the government and warn them. Mamba yata kwa kawaida. That is it. The government has been laying, uh, uh, you know, uh, the government has been lying and, uh, you know, expressing their anger against the poor people. People have lost their businesses. It is there's nothing working because of overtaxation. We can't survive. We've been suffocated completely. But this man wants to finish us. So why not speak?